Hi there guys, we're going to today look at the true shape of section. Um, obviously if we have a shape like you see in front of us, the uh, prism, a hexagonal based prism, we must just take note of the fact that we have a hexagonal base which is going to be at the bottom and at the top. Okay, Those two bases are hexagons and if they are linked to one another corner by corner, they'll have a prism. Okay. I've also included a vertical trace, which we're going to call a cutting plane. Uh, in different questions, you might have little arrows that are pointing in at these lines over here, like so, um, with the letter A, A. That's the same thing. It's also going to be called a vertical trace. Um, and it will obviously tell you from which direction you either will be looking at. Okay, the, the arrows will indicate that. Right, so. On the right hand side over here, what I've done is I will urge you to go ahead and try and uh, draw or sketch a little concept of what you see in front of you. Um, this is obviously the cut version of it. If I've included or taken away this top portion over here, you would notice that uh, your cut surface would look something like that. I've also included numbers in the surfaces um, so that you can see there. I've called them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 for the bottom. And then your corresponding uh, surface would obviously have the corresponding numbers. Is your 4, based on 4, if I projected it from the top view to your front view, you notice that 4 and 4, uh, they correspond to one another. They are linked to one another. Okay, in this view over here, I've also included the numbers. You'll see here that um, when I go from 1 to 1, um, I've actually cut off number 1, that entire line, Therefore, you can only see that my cut surface will start at the corner one. And if you look at your top view, you'll have exactly the same scenario. Uh, 6 and 6, however, will only be this high. Uh, you'll see that that will be the, the part of line 6 to 6, which is now going to be cut point 6. If I had to put another 6 down here, it'll be 6 and 6. That's how, uh, how line 6 and 6 will be. Line 3 and 5 and will be unaffected, it's not cutting through line 3 and 5 and so line 4 uh, will also be unaffected. Alright, so let's get on with the true shape of section. Um, what I do want you guys to understand is when you've cut down a tree at an angle, um, you'll notice that when you're looking at it from a front view, uh, perhaps from the direction of my pen, you'll notice the cut line, okay, the angle at which it's, which it's cut. But if I had to look from this angle over here, uh, you've got to ask yourself a question, will you be able to see the actual shape, the true shape of that uh, cut surface? Now, try and answer that for yourself in a moment. And then how about angling this at a 90 degree angle to that actual surface? Looking at that surface at a 90 degree angle, will you now be able to see the actual or the true shape? of that section. So once I've cut down my tree, let's uh, say this is my hexagonal shaped tree, um, which, which way will you see uh, the actual true shape of section? Alright, so the way we're going to go about determining the true shape of section in our, from our front view is we have already predetermined a 45 degree cut line in our front view, uh, therefore I need to look at a 90 degree angle to the surface. Alright, I'm going to cut this away because we now know that we don't have this existing anymore. This is where they used to be. I'm going to leave a light faint line so you guys can notice that it used to be there. Okay, plus the numbers involved. Just imagine it there still. And then I'm going to take, using a sliding set square, This is exactly what you'll be doing on your drawing board as well. Slide it up like so. Draw yourself another XY axis. 
just so that you are beyond the cut points, the furthest cut points. You may label the new cut or the new labeled uh, axis X1, Y1. And now notice that cut point 1 is on cut line, cut point 6 is on cut point 6 or line 6. And we also have included number 2. Now we have an odd one here. This one here is actually cutting through a base. A base edge that is between 2 and 3 and 5 and 6. Alright, because point 3 and 5 is unaffected. And so is 4. So let's label this one point A and B. Right, now you've got to ask yourself the question, can I in fact see what this is going to look like if I do not have a top view, a full top view pre present? Remember, the more I draw, the more I complete, the more I have to feed my brain. More imagery, that is. So I'm going to simply project this information down. Line A and B, which is cutting through, we said, between 6 and 5, and between 2 and 3. Well, let's test that theory. Between 2 and 3, and between 6 and 5. Right. And also we have at point 6 and at point 2. If I had to project it down. Okay. Also, if I had to project point one down, it would actually fall on one. So my cut surface in my top view would look like so. It would run, let's call A between two and three. From A, to B, not from 3 to 5, because remember, 3 and 5 remains unaffected, and I'd have it run from B down to 6, from B down to 6, from 6, sorry, from B down to 6, from 6 down to 1, from 6 down to 1, and from 1 back around the back end to 2, from 1 to the back end of 2, then 2 back to A, 2 back to A. Alright, so remember that we'll use a 45 degree set square to hatch this area, just like I have done over here. Do them at equal intervals please, I'm just going to write here, hatch, or cross section. Okay, now for the true shape of section, true shape of section is a little bit more tricky, we're going to, like I have done over here, from the new X1, Y1 axis, go at a 90 degree angle. Now remember, when I'm looking at the surface over here, that's my eyeball. If I'm looking at that surface at a 90 degree angle, we'll notice or see the true shape of section. If I had to look at it from this angle over here, Okay, I'll notice that I'll simply just see my left side view, noting that this is first angle orthographic projection. If I look from this angle over here, I'll be able to see my top view. Now notice that this is my top view. I am not seeing the true shape of section. This is obviously the sectioned area and it cannot be the true shape of section. So the correct one will in fact be from this view over here. Right, so since we're going to be looking from this view over here, we've got to literally take it back that way 
project our views and our cut points back into this direction because what my eye see, it sees is point one, six and two, and point A and B. So let's do exactly that. I'm going to take my sliding set square once again. Now that I have the base to work off with, what you'd need to do is obviously go ahead and slide it a little bit further away, let's say a little bit further back, like so. Keep this one nice and steady. And line it up with cut point one. Cut point one now will be projected at a 90 degree angle. We're going to continue with the projection lines. We'll try and keep it as accurate as possible. Okay, since we're running out of a bit of space. And I'd like to just darken my X, Y axis since we are working on it. Or off of it. Okay, so now that I have number one over here, I project it onto my new X, Y axis and I label it one. My six and two, remember we're working with cut points because the cut points are the points that are going to give me the cut surface. That is which I'm going to determine the, the true shape of section. So six and two is now up here. Six and two. This line here represents six and two. And A and B now is A and B. All right. So since I've projected off my front view, where am I going to get my measurements from? My measurements will now be taken off my top view. Okay, so this is where you're going to need your compass or a ruler, doesn't really matter. And you're going to place your compass on number one. that distance over there. Now please remember that I've got my XY axis. The point is going to be taken off my XY axis to the number and I, therefore I've got to go from my new XY, X1, Y1 axis to the number. Not from my cutting plane that I have over there. The cutting plane is telling me where the cut points are on the actual uh, shape. You need to note that I'm going to be working off my X1, Y1 if I'm going to be measuring off my X and Y. So there it is, number one over here. So I'm going to go ahead and place number one. I'm going to describe my arc. I'm going to find point one over here. Okay, and so we continue. We're also going to be uh, finding number two. Now, here's the next question. Well, do we now take it from the actual cut point down to the view? No. Remember, we are using the front view as my projection, and we are going to be using my top view, anything below the X, Y axis, as my top view from the X, one, uh, X Y axis down to the number. So I'll go ahead. i close this up. I go to, because I'm taking this one for number two, go to where two is, scrap my arc, I plot number two. Please note that two and three, or two and A for that matter, are equally distant away from X and Y. So I'm going to go to A, I might as well project another line up here, and I'll have A done. All right. If you want to test the theory, I'll go from the X, Y axis to A, I'll take it to the X1, Y1 axis, and I plot A. Now I need to find all the way from the X, Y axis down to B. And if I open up from the X, Y axis 
nice and big. And I'm going to put it on the same line which represents B. Okay, and also we know that B and 6 are both equally distant away from X and Y, or X, the X, Y axis. There they are over there. So I'm going to use the same distance. I haven't changed the distance here for number 6, which is in line with number 2. And we know that that 6 is going to go back to 1. We've already found 1. So how do we know that we found all the points of the actual um, section surface? Well, when I'm referring back to my cut surface over here, my image, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, back to 1. So 5 actual points that are going to be forming my true shape of section. Therefore, let's see. I've got 1, 2, 3, four, five points, and therefore my test is successful. And go ahead, once I've got the points, remember that points join to one, uh, one another form lines. Lines connected to one another form Lamina, lamina which is a flat surface with coordinates and once I have lamina and I join the lamina together I get shapes like my prisms or prisms or uh, pyramids. Right and then obviously we know we're going to section or this more commonly known here yeah, keep to the theme hatch this entire surface. Okay, so I'm going to just do this with my free hand. And please remember that you do have to hatch all the way to the end. And 45 degree lines. Equal intervals the true shape of section as well. And please label it. Right guys, there we have it. Okay, uh, you might ask yourself, how far away do we want the X1, Y1 to be from the VT or the AA, whichever you're going to be labeling it? Guys, it doesn't really matter um, as long as whatever you've drawn over here is in construction. Uh, you can have it 10 moles off, you can have it 5 moles off, whatever works for you so that you can have this true shape of section fit inside of your page. Uh, if need be, you could draw a new X1, Y1 uh, line over here, a horizontal line over here. If, it doesn't, if this doesn't fit inside of your page, and you can simply take these measurements from here to here, plot them from here to here, obviously have point 0.1 for instance over here, go ahead measure, measure away, put it on this side over here, measure it, me measure 6 and 2 away from 1 which is over there, uh, plot it over here then, 6 and 2, and uh, A and B, and then do your 90 degree projections off this side here. Remember that that will be the projection of your front view then. You're still going to be taking your measurements from your top view. Guys, I hope this uh, helped you guys quite a bit with a two shape of section. Um, please like the video, share it, uh, make sure that uh, your, your peers know about this uh, video so that uh, they can get their answers or their questions answered. Thank you very much.